Welcome to Monk and Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, serious black might have died, but we are going to ensure that this problem serves as a foundation and it helps us thrive in the coding world. Spoilers alert. The problem is that you are given an RAA having n integers. What is x and what is y? x is the largest number less than i such that a of x is greater than a of i. And y is the smallest number greater than i such that a of y is greater than a of y. So each i value is going to have one x and one y value. Let's have a closer look. Here we've got a really nice explanation. Let's say this is our input array, 5, 4, 1, 3, 2. Now, first, when we have a look at 5, we consider all the numbers before 5. There are no numbers before 5, so directly we print minus 1 for its x value. Now we have a look at 4. First, we consider all the values before 4. Which of these is greater than 4 and has the highest possible index? That is 5. 5 is greater than 4 and 5's index is 1. There is no number after 5. Assuming it's 1 indexed, the position value is 1. Now we have a look at 1. What all numbers are present before 1? 4 and 5, 5 and 4. Which of these numbers are greater than 1? Both are greater. 5 and 4 are both greater than 1. But 4 is the closest. 4 has the greatest index value. That's why we return its location, which is 2. We have a look at 3. Which numbers are there before 3? 5, 4 and 1. Which are greater than 3? 5 and 4. And which is the closest to 3? Which has the highest position value? That is 4. So 3 also has 2 as its x value. And finally, when we have a look at 2, 3 is the highest valid number. Its position is 4, which is why 4 comes in. Now, why is the exact opposite? We've got to have a look at all numbers to the right that are greater than the number in question. So if we have a look at 5, there are 4 numbers to the right. None of them are greater than 5, minus 1. We have a look at 4, 3 numbers to its right. None of the 3 numbers are greater than 4. So its value, its y value is also minus 1. When we have a look at 1 though, 3 and 2 are present to its right. 3 is the value that's closest to 1, which is why we return its position. Its position is 4. Finally, when we have a look at 3, 2 is the number to its right. 2 is less than 3, which is why minus 1 is our result. We've got to add each of the x and y values and return it. So when we have a look at the very first values, that's minus 1 plus minus 1, which is minus 2. When we have a look at the second values, 1 minus 1 is 0. The third values give us 2 plus 4, which is 6, and so on. Let's consider this array right here. This is our input. And we want to build the x array first. 8 has no values before it. So its corresponding x value is minus 1. And now that goes into our stack. We're also going to attach its y value to it because that is its unique identifier. That tells us which position it's at. Now we have a look at 6. 8 is present in our stack. That means we visited 8. And we know 8 is greater than 6 which is why we take its index, we add one, and we set that as the x value of 6. Now 6 goes into our stack. This stack is going to consist of increasing numbers. The number at the top is going to be the least, and the number at the bottom is going to be the greatest. If any number violates this rule, they're going to have to start popping out or removing elements from the stack. Next, 3 comes in. We compare that with the element at the top of our stack, that is 6. 6 is greater than 3. So we add 1 to that index, that i position. We set that as 3's x value. And we place 3 on the top of the stack. Now here's where it gets interesting. When we hit 4, we're going to see that 3 is less than 4, which is why we pop it from our stack. I'm just going to remove the i values for now. Why do we pop the element that's less than 4? You'll see that when we hit the next element. But for now, we're going to remove 3 from the top. The next element is 6. 6 is greater than 4, so it's fine. It fits the rules of our stack. We return 6's index. That's 1 plus 1. 
we set that as the x value for 4. And now we place 4 at the top of our stack. Now, when we have a look at 7, we're going to say that 4 gets popped out. Since 4 is less than 7, there's no point considering 3. 3 will definitely be less than 7. That's why we popped it out in the earlier step. That's because we don't have to waste time considering that value. If 4 is less than 7, there's no point in considering 3. Now that 4 is popped out, we check 6. 6 is also less than 7. 6 also gets popped out. But 8 is not. Which is why we return 8's index plus 1. And we place 7 on the top of our stack. We continue to rinse and repeat. Once we hit 9, we can see both 7 and 8. They're both less than 9. Which is why they both fly out of our array. 9 comes in. And its index is minus 1. Since no element was greater than 9, its x value is going to be negative 1. Finally, we have a look at 4. 9 is greater than 4. So all we do is set its x value to the location of 9. Now, how do we generate the y array? It's the exact same process, except we move from right to left. We start at 4. How many numbers are there after 4? There are no numbers after 4 minus 1 and we place 4 into our stack. When we have a look at 9, 9 is greater than 4, which is why 4 gets popped out. 9 comes in and it has a value of negative 1. A value of minus 1 means that it is the greatest number until that location. We move on to 7. 7 is less than 9. So 7 can go on top of our stack. And now you know how it goes. So we're just going to fast forward through the entire process. And this is our y array. The final step is to simply add the x values to their corresponding y values and return the answer. Here you can see the code. x and y, we're initially just going to populate them with zeros. And stack is going to be the stack. We're going to generate y first, which is why we start from the end and we move on to the beginning. Now at each step, we're going to be appending the value along with its position. As long as the stack is not empty, we take the top element in the stack and we compare it with the incoming element. If the incoming element is greater than or equal to the top element, we pop that value out. After every pop has been made, if the stack is empty, that means we set that element's y value to negative one. It's the maximum element till that point. If the stack is not empty, we take the position of the topmost element and set that as the y value. We add 1 and we set it to y. We do the exact same process for x. The only difference is this for loop runs from 0 to n. And finally, we print x of i plus y of i. Let's see if this works. Samples have been passed and submit works like a charm. So guys, this is an introductory problem to stacks and the next problem is going to be about queues. This is just to help get you started with the concepts. As we move on, we're going to be encountering a lot harder problems as you've seen on CodeMark. So if you like the video, hit the three buttons and I'll see you all next time.